Formula One is considered to be the pinnacle of motorsport, and the sport is currently going through a series of notable changes. A generational one with the protagonists of the last few decades like Hamilton, Vettel, Alonso and Rakonin likely retiring for good in the next few years. And as the new breed of drivers arrives, so does potentially the first non-Mercedes world champion of the hybrid era this year, alongside a set of revolutionary rule changes for 2022. Codemasters licensed F1 games are going through a metamorphosis of their own, as the British publisher has recently been bought by Electronic Arts, and their scope is undoubtedly increasing. Enter F1 2021 then, the first Formula 1 game published by EA since 2003, which we've had the pleasure of testing for you on Xbox Series X. There may have been long-running jokes and memes about sports games basically being reskinned versions of each other every year without any meaningful updates from time to time. This may be more true for certain franchises than others, but the usual common thread between them is how major upgrades indeed tend to only appear every couple of years, and with the global pandemic that certainly didn't help developers with already tight schedules to deliver the latest chapter in a franchise. And yet, while Codemasters F1 formula has not been drastically altered, there's a surprising amount of new modes, features and tricks that change how our virtual rendition of Formula 1 is played and lived by players. Perhaps the most notable and advertised addition is Breaking Point, a scripted and dramatic story in the vein of NBA 2K's story mode or FIFA's short-lived The Journey, where players get to live the path of two fictional drivers, starting at the end of the 2019 season and moving forward. Young F2 champion Aidan Jackson and his more experienced teammate Kasper Ackerman. Players get to choose between five teams to begin their career. Aston Martin, Alfa Tori, Alfa Romeo, Haas and Williams, and are therefore placed into the various scenarios in their intense rivalry. These are not complete races or weekends usually, merely short scenarios the player has to get through such as catching up on your teammate during the middle part of the race, managing your position with a malfunctioning gearbox or having to recover after a nasty crash. Based on whether the objective is met or not, players then get to see cutscenes that bring the story forward, in this case with very limited agency on the outcome of the story beats. Even many of the on-track incidents are scripted, so if the mode dictates that Jackson and Ackerman have to crash on the opening race of the season, well, that's the only potential outcome. In between, players can access their email addresses with communications from teams, rivals and journalists, a faux Twitter where real personalities like Will Buxton and David Coulthard alongside fans comment and post jokes about the races, but also their phone to talk to other key people in the world of F1 or even the driver's own families. Even Devon Butler makes a comeback, the cocky, aggressive but also damned fast British driver we got to know from F1 2019's career mode has graduated with excellent results into the pinnacle of motorsports in his debut year at Haas according to the game's lore, and as such he has now become the benchmark for promising rookies to beat at their debut in Formula 1. Predictably our heroes will butt heads and clash horns with him rather often. The career goes from the humble beginnings of the 2019 season finale in Formula 2 through the 2020 campaign and all the way to the current title season, which ends on a satisfying note but also seems to heavily imply that this mode story will be continued in next year's game as well. We certainly hope so. The mode is a lot of fun, with various memorable scenes and it gives players a never before seen approach to a virtual F1 career. If anything, it feels a bit limited so far. There's very little to do in between events, bar reading emails, the faux Twitter, and answering quite honestly copy-paste phone calls with the same three people or so. We also encountered two hard console crashes on Series X during post-race interviews and one during a replay. Luckily, the rather good autosave system made sure that we didn't have to replay the race beforehand. Likewise, an event in Austria in the final season felt completely off in terms of difficulty balancing, as the player is required to gain 25 seconds during a single safety car lap. Granted, I yet had created my custom setups at that point, but lowering to the minimum difficulty, I just managed to barely pull it off after multiple tries, 
whereas I could confidently complete anything else at the higher difficulties. All in all, still a couple of things to iron out in Breaking Point, but it's a promising start and we're curious to see where the story goes from here on out. Fortunately, Codemasters aren't leaving us at the side of the track those who prefer a more classic and open-ended single-player campaign, as both the classic career mode and my team return from last year's game. Career mode is more or less identical to the previous instalments, with some quality of life changes for the most part, though there's a massive new option for players to explore, a two-player cooperative mode. This allows players both online and on the same console to share their career's time span and in-game lore of driver rivalries, market changes and so on, fighting for the same goals or even going their separate ways as they can be teammates, rivals in opposing teams, or one could remain stuck in a back marker team while the other is fighting for the championship. It's all up to players' agency. My team is back, as I mentioned, the much-beloved addition from F1 2020 that allowed players to create their own team, a fictional 11th team that can be customised and handled in many aspects, almost as if it were a manager game of sorts. Research and development, mechanics, paints, sponsors, even the drivers. Indeed, with F1 2021 holding the licences for the 2020 season as well, players can create interesting deviations from real-world events. What if Mick Schumacher debuted a year earlier in this rookie team? What if they managed to stag Max Verstappen from Red Bull on the brink of convincing developments throughout the years? Interestingly, not unlike EA's lucrative Ultimate Team modes in other sports titles, a variety of notable drivers from the past can also be signed from a selection of legends, including the likes of Michael Schumacher and Arten Senna, but also more recent retirees like Nico Rosberg and Philippe Massa. But the career modes are not the only aspects of F1 2021 that can be tweaked to the player's own liking. Much like previous instalments, Codemaster's latest title offers a vast customization of driving aids and assists, allowing everyone to find the compromise between pure arcade and sim-like experience. As usual, it doesn't quite nail the realism of physics, tyre temperatures, car park degradation and so on of titles like R Factor or iRacing, but it's not even the developer's target. Just as the 2021 regulations made real-life Formula 1 cars have a much less stable rear end, which is also noticeable on the amount of driver errors we've had this season, the rear tyres of cars in the new game are far easier to lose, thanks to a better simulation of the consequences of riding over a bump or turning with too much intensity in a patch full of rubber pieces left by degrading Pirellis. As such, customising your setups, or at least finding the best ones online, is going to be even more important this year, as the car needs to be handled with more care than in F1 2020 on the default settings. This is evident from the damage model too, which was revamped to include areas from practically all sides of the car. An opponent rear-ended you? That can damage the rear wing now, making the back of the car even less stable and predictable. Hopped on a curb too hard like Lewis Hamilton did in Austria recently? Like in his case, the bottom of the car can get damaged, reducing the grip and impacting the lap times. In previous games, avoiding damage on most tracks was too easy. This time, virtual racers will have to be careful of all elements of the car. Naturally, player cameras can be chosen by a variety of standard options, cockpit, nose on the floor, third person, but with also every angle and distance can be tweaked to everybody's liking, just like the HUD which is almost 100% customisable in its elements with regards to size, placement and so on. Pop icon Charlie XCX in her bold and bombastic single Vroom Vroom envisioned herself crashing parties in a bubblegum pink Ferrari comparing herself to Fernando Alonso in the process. The mental imagery of Alonso in a pink Ferrari is certainly an interesting idea and indeed F1 2021 allows for excellent customization of cars both in the my team portion of the game and in a more general custom look players can choose for themselves for online lobbies, quick races etc. With a wide palette of skins and colours and tons of sponsors to place on various parts of the car, much like Codemasters Dirt 5, or not place them at all for a more naked look, but also various looks to choose from for your virtual avatar. It's easy to stand out now. While the servers and in-game shops were not online during the time of our review, it seems that the game retains the model from F1 2020, a pit pass to unlock items with XP, other items to buy with in-game credits, etc. Let's hop back to the driving aids real quick. This year, Codemasters title offers a wider than ever arrangement of customizations to truly create an experience that is suited for everyone. 
traction control, brake assists, 2D or 3D colored racing lines to help find the optimal routes and braking points, and even automatic braking, collisions off, and so on. Even a lot of the more laborious aspects like interviews, car development in career and such can be optimised to allow the players the chance to focus on just the racing without missing out on car improvements and relationships with teams. Even somebody who'd never played a racing game before could have a comfortably great time now and as seen by the blooming esports scene of the previous titles, so can experts. To have such an online presence, you first need to have a solid multiplayer, and F1 2021 seems to be missing none of the things that made previous instalments great. Tournaments, esports qualifiers, ranked matches, casual races, custom matches with completely customizable rule sets, like other online options due to the servers being offline during the review window, we were unable to test out all of these modes ourselves, but there should be little change here compared to F1 2020. There's even a well-made split screen mode for two players to race each other and others locally or online, another great element that has come back from last year. The optimization on this mode is pretty good with the game managing to maintain a consistent frame rate even with twice the amount of rendering to do. Those seeking pure speed and not necessarily wheel banging competition will be happy to know that time trials are also back with global leaderboards to climb once again. With 20 tracks, 10 different Formula 1 cars, both with equal performance options and realistic power levels, and all the F2 field on top of wet and dry versions of each circuit, the records to fight for are certainly many. This is also an excellent mode to find some truly competitive one lap setups, as people can download other players tweaks and tunings to try and beat their times with their own tools. The only real downside to the track selection is that the late cancellation of the Vietnam event denies us that track from the playable rotation, and likewise the changes to the Melbourne circuit that were set to be introduced this year are not going to go live, and will not be present in the game. In short, little changed from F1 2020, but it's not really the developer's fault on this one. This being the series' first official foray into the newest consoles, including Series X where we tested the game, perhaps we expected a greater technical improvement. Xbox One and PlayStation 4 remain supported, and indeed the game looks and runs more or less on par with F1 2020, even on the new generation of hardware, though the SSDs drastically shorten the loading times and even menus feel snappier and more reactive than ever. Players can choose between quality and performance mode too. The difference won't be noticeable on most screens as this only really impacts cutscenes. The gameplay is a butter smooth 60fps across the board on all modes. TVs and monitors with 120Hz support and beyond can however obtain a 120fps option with only a reasonable resolution knock that brings the game down to 1440p from the full 4K it normally runs at in 60fps mode. In a sport where every thousandth of a second counts, having twice as many frames can make a lot of difference for high level players. HDR is naturally supported on consoles and TVs that allow that said function. In general the presentation of the game is also more elegant than ever. Players can access the showroom anytime to watch the ins and outs of each and every car, F1, F2 and those customised by players as well. It's not as manic in terms of details and interactivity as Forza Motorsport's Forza Vista mode, but it's a welcome addition. The introduction videos narrated by Will Buxton, who many may remember from Netflix's Drive to Survive in particular, the well-made cutscenes in Breaking Point, an improved HUD that focuses all key info in the mid-bottom of the screen where elements of the car are likely already covering up part of that screen, there's just a renewed attention to give players a product that feels premium and classy in nearly every aspect. F1 2021 is not the game that will convince those unsatisfied of Codemaster's approach to the pinnacle of motorsport as most of the changes seen in this title are iterative. Breaking Point however is almost worth the price of admission alone despite feeling slightly undercooked in some aspects. The narrative, the presentation and tension are truly great and Codemaster's first attempt at delivering an actual story mode is worthy of praise. Also a long list of quality of life changes and further customizations offered to players makes F1 2021 perhaps the most accessible and complete Formula 1 experience by Codemasters thus far. 
the jump to the new generations of consoles isn't particularly noticeable aside from that 120 fps mode but electronic arts long-running expertise in sports games is starting to show its fruits on codemasters 13th attempt to bring formula one to gaming after the british studio's acquisition by the american colossus it's an exciting formula one season and the future of the video game version of the sport is in excellent hands Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review, be sure to stay tuned to Xbox Hero, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell so that you can be notified when we drop some fresh content. And we'll see you next time.